Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome thank you for joining us and I am also thankful to the Swayam Prabha Authority for providing me this platform to reach to you people through this course. So, title of this course is called Principles of Economics. Okay? Let me write that it is Principles of Economics. Okay? In fact, uh, throughout this course, we will follow a book that is our textbook for this course and title of that textbook is also the, the same principles of economics. Okay? And this book is written by N. G. Mankiw. I will encourage each of you to procure a copy of this book. So, it's, it will be an asset for you. It is it's very, very good book. And this book is also available in two. So, this principles of economics, the title of the book what we are talking about, it is a combined volume. Okay. So, this book is also available in two separate volumes. One is called principles of principles of microeconomics and another is called principles of macroeconomics. In fact, what is this concept of microeconomics, what is the concept of macroeconomics, we are, we are going to discuss in the sometime today. Okay? But uh, these two volumes are actually combined to this volume principle of principles of economics. So, you can procure either both these two copies or this entire full volume of the two copies okay, principles of economics. Both are published by I think Sengage Learning, Sengage Learning. Okay. So, you can procure that book. Okay. Now, let us dis start a discussion of economics or what we are going to discuss through this course. So, let me go to the next page. Yeah. So, what is economics? Okay. Economics is uh, all about how a society manages its scarce resources. Any country, any society, it does not have uh, abundant amount of resources. It has some resources, but with limited quantity. Okay. So, it has to manage those limited quantity of resources, it has to sustain with those quantities of resources and it has to find out a way by which these resources will be distributed among the members of the society. Okay? Members of the society means people, economic uh, agents who are there within that society, each of them uh, will need certain amount of these resources through what principle? Through what mechanism we will distribute those resources across this or amongst these uh, members of the society. So, that is all about economics. Okay. In fact, today we are discussing the chapter 2 of this book. Title of this uh, chapter is called Thinking Like an Economist. Thinking Like an Economist. Okay. So, this is chapter 2 of the book we are following. Uh, in fact, chapter 1 that discusses about 10 principles of economics, how the entire economy works, or different agents of the within economy, individual agents, how they work, how different group of agents uh, interact among themselves, and how the entire economy of a society works, uh, those all those phenomena will be captured by 10 principles that is the topic of the chapter 1 of this book which we will discuss sometimes later. Okay. So, today we are discussing chapter 2 of this book okay. and title of that chapter 2 is thinking like an economist. Okay. So, in this chapter what we are discussing of course, what is economics, how uh, the study of economics proceed, Okay, what is the importance of different model building, what is the importance of role of assumptions and so many associated and 
uh, concepts we will discuss certain certain terminologies like microeconomics, macroeconomics, and certain other important terminologies related to this economics. Those terminologies we will, will uh, which we will frequently come across throughout this course. So we will introduce those terminologies also today. Okay. So economists we claim this subject is another science. How we can think of it's an another science subject? Okay. Like any science subject, how any theory or any law comes into the existence? It starts with certain observation. Let us take an example of say uh, Newton. Right? All of you know about Newton's story. One day he observed that one apple fell from the tree to the ground. Okay? And that observation actually uh, brings some trick into Newton's mind. He thought that in this world, our world perhaps uh, attract all the objects uh, to itself. Okay? So, he hypothesized something, some principle. So, uh, any science, how it works? First, it starts with some observation. On the basis of that observation, some hypothesis is drawn, and then that hypothesis is validated across similar kind of circumstances again and again, across many countries, across many circum uh, many different places and all. And if we see that hypo uh, hypothesized statement is validated everywhere, then it becomes a law or theory. So, economics also we will do exactly the same way. We were te telling about uh, Newton's uh, story. So, first from that observation Newton hypothesized that perhaps this world uh, attracts everything to itself. Okay? And then uh, that hypothesis uh, uh, has been uh, validated across different places, different spaces and all different societies and all and eventually uh, law of gravity comes. And as you know, law of gravity not it about that only that world or this earth is attracting any particles to itself. In this universe, any two particles that is true, be any two particles they are attracting each other. So, when Newton observed that its earth is basically one particle and apple is another particle, each of them are attracting to each other, okay? that is the uh, law of gravity. Right. So, exactly that way in economics, we will also observe certain behavior and then from there we will hypothesize something, we will validate those hypothesized statement across different societies, across different places, across different circumstances and eventually some, some law will come into the picture. Okay. Like say law of demand, law of demand we will discuss sometimes later in this course. Okay, but uh, by the law of demand is basically you, you will realize or you will observe any person your behavior, my behavior or anybody's uh, any economic agent's behavior in market when a commodity what we are purchasing from the market right if its prices increase or if its price increases then perhaps we will try to consume little bit less or purchase little bit less. Okay. So, from that we can when we are observing a person's behavior in that way, we can first draw an hypothesis that perhaps price and quantity consumption these two variables uh, negatively related to each other. Okay. And then we, we validated uh, we validate that thing across different people, different society, different markets for different commodities like that and then eventually law of demand will come. In fact, what we are hypothesizing that is true. If price increases, quantity consumption or quantity purchase of that commodity falls and vice versa. Right? So, exactly that way. So, uh, economics also in economics law comes following the scientific observation then hypothesizing and then validating of those hypothesized uh, statements and then law comes into the picture one caveat here or uh, we can we, we, we must uh, tell here what is the basic difference in pure science or other pure science and economic science. Basic difference is that say suppose pure science like physics or chemistry where data points you can hypothetically generate it through experiment in laboratory. Okay? Multiple data points you, you are generating again and again through uh, some experiment, but in economics data points are actually people's behavior, economic agents behavior. So, that is why those are really precious and you cannot generate those through any hypothetical experiment. Right? In that way, pure science and economic science is little bit different, although both are science. 
and in this way economics has some similarity with some other kinds of stream of science like say evolutionary biology or say astronomy. So, you evolutionary biology you know Darwin's name and, and his theory survival of the fittest all of you know. Okay. So, those came through evolutionary forces right. So, they are uh, what Darwin observed that is basically one observation and you cannot really generate that kind of observation through any laboratory experiment exactly like astronomers what they do they observe something in the sky or universe okay? and on the basis of that uh, they come to uh, certain theory or certain um, hypothesis and then eventually uh, validated and through certain theory comes. They are also observations are really precious you cannot uh, generate hypothetical observation through laboratory experiment. So, in that way economics is a science, it has some similarity in some other science subject, it has certain dissimilarity with some certain other science subjects okay. and exactly that way like any other science subjects when we are discussing uh, important, uh, important theory or important behavior in economics also we, we need to uh, make certain assumptions. So, assumptions are very important uh, to make like sometimes back we were discussing uh, uh, law of demand right price quantity movement usually in the opposite one commodity its price if goes up perhaps people will try to purchase less amount of that commodity and vice versa right. But this kind of apparent or whatever negative relationship between quantity demanded of a commodity in the market and its price right. Do you think that uh, quantity demanded by you or me or any economic agent of a commodity in the market it does depend only on its price? Not necessarily there are so many other factors in the behind say of course, if my income whatever is there if I keep my income fixed at some level then perhaps the commodities price increases I will try to consume less and vice versa. But suppose price increases, price increases say 10 percent but my income increases say 20 percent. So, even in that situation even if price increases perhaps I may not reduce my consumption because my income also increases parallelly and not only that more than proportionally than price increases right. So, through this example uh, you can realize that how much quantity of a commodity I will demand or I will purchase from the market that not only determine on the uh, not only depend on the price of that commodity, but also the purchaser or the consumer who is going to purchase that from the market what is his income is his or her income is right. But when we will discuss law of demand perhaps we will write say quantity demanded denoted by Q D is some function of price of that commodity. So, a commodity say suppose bread its quantity demanded will de depend on its price. Okay. So, when we are writing this definitely lot of other factors may be there in the background like what I just demonstrated or just told you that income of that particular consumer which quantity demanded we are talking about what is his or her income level. Similarly, some other factors are there what is that consumers taste and preference, what is that consumers uh, or, or uh, some related commodities price how they, they also moves right. Accordingly quantity demand says a taste and preference how important say suppose I am a consumer I want to make some pickle, but that pickle as an essential ingredient I can make pickle out of say tomato, I can make pickle out of say raw uh, mango right. So, now if my taste and preference is always towards mango does not matter whether tomato's price increases or decreases ok. I will try to always first uh, purchase mango only, but now tomorrow or tomorrow or day after tomorrow if I realize that no tomato price one essential substitute ingredient for making pickle like tomato, tomato price is uh, what was earlier is exactly the same kind of thing it does not change much but raw mango's price increases huge. So, perhaps then I will try to uh, shift from mango purchase to tomato purchase to make my pickle 
right. So, so basically my test and preference availability of other substitute kind of commodities how uh, uh, different substitute commodities are uh, available in the market all those factors are also determining parallelly my quantity demanded of mango right. But when we are discussing law of demand although these so many other factors are there which can determine the quantity demanded of a consumer of a particular commodity. But we are focusing our attention to the main variable here principal variable here of our interest quantity demanded and that commodities price right. So, we are making this kind of statement keeping all other associated variable at some fixed level. So, in that way we will bring one terminology you may come across frequently throughout this course that is called ceteris C E T E R I S ceteris paribas. This is a phrase meaning of this phrase is that keeping all other things unchanged. Okay. So, when we will tell law of demand we will tell in this way keeping all other things unchanged if price of a commodity increases quantity demanded of the commodity by a rational consumer will fall and vice versa. That means, we are telling that we are interested to know only the relationship between two these two variables and whatever other variables that may have some implication on this relationship we are keeping those variables fixed at some given level. Okay. So, what is the meaning of ceteris paribus? I hope all of you understand. Okay. So, this is the this is the importance of assumption and importance of uh, this ceteris paribus terminology. Okay. S similarly, uh, importance of uh, assumption I can give you in the science subject how assumption is very important like say uh, you can think of uh, Galileo's experiment right. Galileo uh, what is Galileo's uh, invention? He invented that any falling objects any two falling objects in this universe right. When they are falling uh, they will travel same distance in the same time. Okay. It does not matter how much uh, big object or small object is there. Okay. But uh, Galileo knew that his theory is applicable to a place where there is no friction. Okay. In fact, Galileo showed that theory uh, demonstrated that from uh, leaning tower of Pisa all of you know. Do you think that that is a very good place to judge or, or validate his theory because that is full of air ok. And since air is there air can create some friction ok. But Galileo chose two piece of stones one is little bit bigger stone another is little bit smaller stone ok. And he fell and everybody observed that both the stones because one big another is small. So, they have different masses. Okay. Although their mass are different, but they are traveling the same path uh, in the same time point time right. So, what major objective was to convey this uh, message to the audience that he could do because he deliberately choose uh, two different objects where the friction due to the air is negligible. And Galileo did not choose that say one stone and another piece of paper or a uh, quill right where uh, friction due to air uh, may be substantial right. So, he assumed that as if the place is frictionless although it is not frictionless right. So, to make the thing simpler to the audience to the people who are observing right who are who are trying to validate it uh, trying to validate your proposal your your uh, proposition your hypothesis right. Uh, so, to concentrate or to uh, attract their concentrated mind, their focus, uh, he deliberately choose that place and he deliberately choose the two carefully chosen uh, suitable objects where uh, may be the friction is negligible. Right. So, that kind of thing when we will assume we will uh, make certain assumptions in this uh, economic analysis. Uh, just role of that assumption is to uh, make our attention very focused to the target variables which we are trying to discuss through a theory or through a, through a proposal or proposition right and keeping all other things uh, held fixed somewhere. So, making ceteris paribus assumption to be valid.
right like and in this process uh, okay so we are uh, we, we frequently use so far in uh, today's lecture that rational people rational economic agent by rational economic agent why we refer what we refer by rationality we are referring that uh, those people those agents who deliberately quite purposefully quite judiciously uh, choose that action so that or the choose the best action, best possible action what he or she can choose so that they can achieve their target, their objective, their goal, right. So, people who judiciously, deliberately, systematically, quite purposefully choose the best one among the alternative choices available to him or her, those people are re referred as rational people. And we are assuming throughout this course the economic agents, okay different types of agents will come across all the economic agents are uh, rational ok. So, rational economic people how they behave the law of uh, demand is one that kind of behavior of rational economic people in the market. Now, market uh, I think I am sure that when we tell that market some kind of picture is coming to uh, your mind some kind of notion about what is the market is maybe it is a place where a lot of goods and services commodities are traded are transacted between customers and sellers right. But in economics uh, by market its specific definition is that it is not necessarily a place market is an organization that through that organization customers and sellers they transact with goods and services among themselves it may be a place geographical location it may not be a geographical location these days that uh, uh, what should i say uh, that um, share market right share market if you want to purchase certain share or if you want to uh, engage yourself into stock trading right you need not go any place yes there is stock exchanges in M mumbai okay or certain other places stock exchanges are there but you need not go to there you can you can log in into some website in the uh, through the computer and you can participate into that uh, through online. So, market in economics not necessarily any geographical location it is an organization it needs some platform it may be online platform it may be something else also ok may be a geographical location as well ok. Uh, but it is a platform through which potential consumers and potential traders they interact with goods and services among themselves right ok. So, now in during that say when I, I, I am using this kind of relationship quantity demanded depends on uh, price of that commodity function of P, P is the price and quantity demanded uh, Q D is quantity demanded here right. So, this is essentially some sort of model we are using some mathematical model we are using here to capture that price quantity behavior of the rational people ok in a market right. So, this kind of model also when we are making as we told the so many other variables are there which can influence quantity demanded in our discussion right, but we are keeping them aside exactly like we are using here one model exactly similar sort of different models in your science subject you also have come across uh, in your school uh, in your biology laboratory you will see that uh, one plastic replica of human body right your biology teacher taught you that in a human body where is there where uh, what kind of important organs are there right say heart kidney and all those things right. But do you think that uh, a human body consists of only those important organs nothing else was there lot of other things are there ok skin skin ok then a nervous system blood circulation system lot of other things are there. But if you can rec uh, recall your biology class and whatever uh, human body replica model you have observed there those are uh, this uh, other system what I am telling that blood circulation system nervous system and all those those are not there ok. So, but they are assuming that as if they are not there because target is to introduce the important organs to you people as a student right. So, that is why. So, this kinds of building of model also important to focus our understanding focus our attention to the targeted uh, uh, targeted uh, phenomenon what we are we are trying to uh, convey to the audience right. So, in that way we will use different uh, models also and exactly like the scientific experiment the different models how we use right. So, in our economics our first model is uh, called circular flow diagram 
okay before that let me go to another thing so in an economics uh, two important activities are happening one is called production and another is called consumption two important activities are happening in any economy what is production production is some sort of economic activity through which uh, goods and services we are producing generating okay society is generating producing goods and services what is goods and services these goods and services are certain resources which we have to utilize use for our day to day life for our subsistence for our sustenance right uh, another way i can tell or we can tell what is this uh, production activity every goods and services say one uh, bread okay bread is a good right what kind of utilization of it has in human life okay that bread will meet up our hunger right so bread is a commodity it has certain certain power certain capacity to meet up certain types of needs okay similarly say cloth cloth is another good it help us to cover up our body right so uh, production is an activity through which we generate the human beings or societies uh, want satisfying power within goods and services so let me repeat again each goods and service has some certain type of want or desire satisfying capacity production is a process through which we are generating that capacity within some goods and services those are consumable we will consume okay we are always telling goods and services so you will see that in your in your for your sub, uh, sustenance for our daily life we consume lot of goods like food cloth and all those things some services also we consume right say suppose say uh, one maid is coming to your home to help your mother to clean uh, or do some household activities maybe cleaning the utensils maybe uh, cleaning your room and so on right so that person are they generating any good for you to consume no they are providing some services right so these goods and services are important are valuable and that is why those are transacted in the market okay and production is an activity through which we are generating those goods and services consumption is another activity through which we destroy that desire satisfying capacity of goods and services right say when we told that bread has a has capacity to satisfy our uh, hunger right once i consume the bread that bread whatever capacity it has that i am destroying through that process so consumption is another important economic activity what is happening within a society through which we are destroying the want or desire satisfying power of goods and services okay and in economy two agents are there which are responsible for this production activity which are responsible for consumption activity production activity is responsible for the unit or unit organization which is responsible for production activity that is called firm f i r m unit of or unit organization which is responsible for consumption activity though that is called household or family household or family okay here firm i am sure uh, all of you know what is f i r m and what is its difference from f a r m firm so f a r m firm those kinds of organization which are mainly engaged into production activity of agriculture and allied uh, sectors goods and services like different uh, co different kinds of uh, cereals corns then pc culture like that poultry farming this poultry farming pc culture these are called al agriculture allied activities producing of vegetables fruits uh, cereals and other things these are directly agricultural activity right so farm are basically agriculture and allied activity related uh, production uh, organization and farm is a larger sub set so you can think of this is a broader set which is farm farm 
and a subset of that FARM. So, by FIRM we are referring all types of organization which are engaged into production activity right both including agriculture and allied and others as well service sector, industry sector and all those ok. So, two basic organizations are there one is farm which are responsible for production activity another is household which are responsible for consumption activities ok. And now we will discuss that uh, one one big diagram that is our first model in this course that called circular flow diagram using that diagram we will demonstrate how different types of organization or these two types of organization farm and households are engaged into themselves okay, through different types of markets.